Uh, good morning and welcome to service. Our pastor is on vacation today, so John and I will be doing the service for you. A uh, few announcements here. Next Sunday, of course, is Rally Sunday, the 18th. Uh, we'll be starting Sunday school again, and I believe it's going to be Sunday school for everybody. So uh, please plan on attending that. Uh, coffee fellowship, of course, after service today. And uh, that's about uh, all we've got for announcements, unless anyone has anything else. So, so uh, our first hymn this morning, opening hymn, is hymn number 72, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Uh, please rise. Sir. You may be seated. John, do we have a children's story time? I think we can pass for this Sunday. We'll, we'll get in children's so. Our uh, second hymn is uh, You Are My All in All, hymn number 427. You can remain seated for that, please.
Please rise for their for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God and in steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love us as God loves. Amen. Our praise hymn is Search Me, O God, number 385. Please, please join me in the prayer of the day. O oh God, overflowing with mercy and compassion, you lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care that we may reject whatever is contrary to you and may follow all things that sustain your life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from 1 Timothy Chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorably in belief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I receive mercy, so that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utter, utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God to be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please ride for the, for the gospel reading. Our gospel today is from Luke 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and scribes were grumbling and saying, 
this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told him this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels, God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. John will now give us a sermon. first thing I need to do is to thank Jim for his help today. Uh, he's one of those great people when I asked him to do this, or if he was interested, he said, I will do whatever needs to be done. And Jim, thank you very much for your excellence in what you do for us. Your loving heart showed this week greatly, so thank you. Uh, today is the 14th Sunday after the Pentecost. And I'll tell you, tell you a little about that. Today is a Sunday in which we celebrate the animal kingdom, believe it or not. And so it's unique that there is a story about the sheep, but this is a Sunday. And so the last hymn of the day will help us to uh, thank God for the animal world that we have. Blessings to you from God our Father, Jesus Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Comforter and Counselor. This is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. This season is called Ordinary Time by our Catholic friends due to the fact that it contains no major feasts or festivals. The Pentecost season, which is what Protestants call it, is the longest of the season of the church year. And this year will end 10 weeks from today uh, with Christ the King Sunday, merely four days before Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is 10 weeks and four days away, 74 days. This is the time uh, when, that we celebrate the return of Jesus as the King of, King, and King of Kings and Lord of Lords, when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, I'm gonna get into a little bit about the lectionary and how it works. There are three sets of lessons in the common lectionary, A, B, and C. We're ending year C now, and we'll begin on year A on the last Sunday of November, the beginning of the church year, and that is the season of Advent, and that's the first Sunday of Advent. In year C, we've been studying the Gospel of Luke. Luke's Gospel is a detailed historical account of the life of Jesus. With great accuracy and clarity, Luke portrays Jesus, our Savior, as Son of God, a compassionate, unprejudiced, accepting, forgiving person true man, and true God. Luke thus far has presented Jesus as one who destroyed and broke down religious, cultural, social, and economic barriers. He risked his own reputation by associating with those people who some regarded as outcasts. And that's what we'll see today in our lesson that Jim just read for us. Jesus welcomed and spoke to those uh, who the church leaders of the time shunned as being of less than stellar reputation. Luke's account of Jesus' birth is probably the best known version of the humble birth of Jesus in a stable's manger. Uh, the life and ministry of Jesus did not meet what some expected the Messiah, the anointed one of God, uh, should fulfill, yet he fulfilled many of the prophecies written down during the centuries before his birth. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus faced and conquered what separated humankind from God since the uh, beginning of, uh, of time and the sins of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In Handel's Oratorio Messiah, there is an aria, since by man came death, which is a 
very moving and somber declaration, which is followed with a rousing explanation in the chorus of just what Jesus did for us. It, it starts out, since by man came death, and that's repeated several times, and then the chorus joins, by man, God's son in human form, came also the resurrection of the dead. If you recall the passion story, the veil separating the Holy of Holies and the temple, which kept people other than the, the high priest out from where uh, the dwelling place of, the, of God was supposed to have been, was torn in two when Jesus died. That was to show that we were no longer separated from God by sin, but that Christ had reconciled us to God through his precious shed blood. The victory over death and the grave far exceeded the beliefs of many of Jesus' faithful followers. Luke tells how Jesus preached, taught, and lived an unexpected life. The most amazing thing is that Jesus gave us reconciliation to God and salvation, eternal life with God, purchased by that own, his own precious blood. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus told John the Revelator, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, anyone, hearing my voice opens the door, I will come into them and dine with them and they with me. What an invitation and what a savior we have. Jesus loves us and longs to be with us. This leads us into today's lesson. As we begin chapter 15 of Luke, Jesus is preaching surrounded by a diverse audience. We have in that audience two very distinct groups, uh, those considered to be unworthy and the Pharisees and scribes, leaders of the church. Those church leaders saw themselves as devout and above all others in education, in culture, and in economic standing. The Pharisees knew the law, the Jewish scripture, as did the scribes who had handwritten copies of the scriptures with extreme accuracy. They too knew the law. So as we begin our story, there at the fringes of the group listened to assemble, uh, assemble to listen rather. They, they were grumbling and complaining about Jesus saying, he welcomes sinners and eats with them. The next verse, verse three states that Jesus told them in this parable, and I really love it when Jesus uses a parable of scriptural truths to uh, ish, uh, illustrate an unquestionable story form. Just imagine the comments being made by the church leaders on the edge of the group mumbling among themselves as Jesus preaches. As we view this scene, the bad company, as they would call it, was right directly in front of Jesus and they were listening intently. These parables were a reminder to them that God was searching them out. God was looking for the lost. This was in stark contrast to those the Pharisees and scribes viewed to be God's kind of people. The church leaders felt that those sitting closest to Jesus were truly lost to God. They were truly unwelcome to the church people because the only thing they could bring to the church flock would be to accomplish discord and a messing up those that the church leaders considered already saved. And that's why Jesus mentions that in the parable that uh, there's more joy over one sinner than over those who are uh, considered already saved. And, you know, for those, those leaders, a change of heart was never considered. They didn't think that people could change their ways. Things were just as they were and they were going to stay that way. The church leaders never considered God's love for all. How, they were saying, how could this be? The New Testament is filled with illustrations of Jesus as the good shepherd and the people as his flock. Remember the kid's song? A church is not a building, a church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. What a great parable Jesus teaches. Nearly everyone can understand when you have a flock of 100 and one goes astray, a good shepherd or a good farmer will search high and low for a lost sheep or cow or goat. When he finds that lost one, he's elated. He or she is filled with joy for the lost has been found. This is something we can all relate to. 
In this case, the shepherd lovingly places the lost on his shoulders and carries the lost back to the fold. He then calls his friends and neighbors to celebrate with him. In the same manner, Jesus tells of a woman who lost who lost one of her 10 silver coins. This was no doubt a very significant financial loss to her. She lights a lamp, and remember, our God is the God of light. That's why he mentions this, I think. She sweeps her house diligently and completely, and when the lost coin is found, she too calls her friends and neighbors to celebrate the return of the lost. And there's one more story, and this wasn't in Luke today, but think of the prodigal son when the father is elated and overjoyed at his son's homecoming. He runs out from his house to greet the wayward boy, pours out his love to him, and invites friends and neighbors to join in a massive homecoming celebration. To finish today's parable, Jesus tells us, and remember that Jesus said that he only told people what his father says, and he only did what his father told him to do and that there is an unspeakable joy in the presence of the angels of God over a repentant sinner. This is most certainly true. Now, since we have been given a Messiah, and as we recall our own salvation and how we've been found by our Savior, it becomes our privilege and responsibility to spread joy and love of Jesus to others and to invite them to come in and join our celebration by having them make Jesus their savior too. God is still seeking and searching the lost and the unrepentant. He never gives up, he never stops, he never will stop. His love for each of us is that great. Let us give thanks every day for God's love for us. Jesus has conquered death, hell, and the grave for us. He paid the price of reconciliation to God for us with his own precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary. Because of his death and resurrection, we too shall rise. Have you decided to choose life? All it takes for us is to personally decide to believe, repent of our sins, and choose to follow him. Thanks be to God for his infinite love, his infinite mercy, and wonderful grace, which he pours out each day. Hallelujah to the Lord Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and is also the good and great shepherd who continues to seek the lost. And really, each one of us, may the joy in heaven be great at each ransomed one, as Jesus has told us. And all God's people say, Amen. We will join together in the singing of hymn number 422, Amazing Grace.
Please rise and join me in the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayers of intercession today. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together in one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Your people will receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love. Give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our incommunicable interreligious inter commitments. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation groans as it suffers the impact of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew us to the will of, to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvest that they all may share. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so they know the peace in the world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide to, for those in need. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, our feet, our voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries in this communion that we may serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today is the 21st anniversary of September 11th. Let us remember and respect and honor our, our veterans, our emergency medical personnel, the police departments, and all the others that help us in our daily lives when difficult times come to us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Uh, we will now have our offering. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, 
who seats a table for all. Amen. You may be seated. Thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy Lord. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you have made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water in the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, and you speak to us and call us to witness, forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Please rise for the Lord's Prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God who gives us life to all things and frees us from the despair, bless you with truth and peace, and may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith and hope and love. Amen. Our closing hymn will be number 723 for fruits of all creation. <laughs> 